This is the public part. Yeah. Nirvana and the discovery of the all negating absolute. Um, I'll read part of this now, part of it tomorrow morning, and the last canto tomorrow afternoon. A calm, slow sun looked down from tranquil heaven. A routed, sullen rear guard of retreat, the last rains had fled, murmuring across the woods, or failed, a sibilant whisper mid the leaves, and the great blue enchantment of the sky recovered the deep rapture of its smile. A bit like this morning. <laughs> Its mellow splendor, unstressed by storm-licked heats, found room for a luxury of warm, mild days. The night's gold treasure of autumnal moons came floating, shipped through ripples of fairy air. And Savitri's life was glad, fulfilled like Earth's. She had found herself she knew her being's aim. Although her kingdom of marvelous change within remained unspoken in her secret breast, all that lived round her <coughs> felt its magic's charm. The trees' rustling voices told it to the wind. Flowers spoke in ardent hues an unknown joy. The birds caroling became a canticle. The beasts forgot their strife and lived at ease. Absorbed in wide communion with the unseen, the mild ascetics of the wood received a sudden greatening of their lonely muse. This bright perfection of her inner state poured overflowing into her outward scene, made beautiful, dull, common, natural things, and action wonderful and time divine. Even the smallest, meanest work became a sweet or glad and glorious sacrament an offering to the self of the great world or a service to the one in each and all. A light invaded all from her being's light. Her heartbeat's dance communicated bliss. Happiness grew happier, shared with her by her touch. And grief some solace found when she drew near. Above the cherished head of Satyavan she saw not now fate's dark and lethal orb. A golden circle round a mystic sun disclosed to her newborn predicting sight the cyclic rondure of a sovereign life. In her visions and deep etched veridical dreams, in brief shiftings of the future's heavy screen, he lay not by a do dolorous decree a victim in the dismal antar of death, 
or born to blissful regions far from her, forgetting the sweetness of earth's warm delight, forgetting the passionate oneness of love's clasp, absolved in the self-wrapped immortal's bliss. Always he was with her, a living soul that met her eyes with close enamored eyes, a living body near to her body's joy, a living body near to her body's joy. But now, no longer in these great wild woods, in kinship with the days of bird and beast, and level to the bareness of earth's brown breast, but mid the thinking high-built lives of men, in tapestried chambers and on crystal floors, in armored town or gardened pleasure walks, even in distance closer than her thoughts, body to body near, soul near to soul, moving as if by a common breath and will. They were tied in the single circling of their days together by love's unseen atmosphere, inseparable like the earth and sky. Thus for a while she trod the golden path. This was the sun before abysmal night. Once, as she sat in deep, felicitous muse, still quivering from her lover's strong embrace, and made her joy a bridge twixt earth and heaven, an abyss yawned suddenly beneath her heart. A vast and nameless fear dragged at her nerves as drags a wild beast its half-slaughtered prey. It seemed to have no den from which it sprang. It was not hers, but hid its unseen cause. Then rushing came its vast and fearful fount, a formless dread with shapeless, endless wings filling the universe with its dangerous breath, a denser darkness than the night could bear, enveloped the heavens and possessed the earth a rolling surge of silent death. It came curving round the far edge of the quaking globe, effacing heaven with its enormous stride. It will to expunge the choked and anguished air and end the fable of the joy of life. It seemed her very being to forbid. Abolishing all by which her nature lived and labored to blot out her body and soul. A clutch of some half-seen invisible an ocean of terror and of sovereign might, a person and a black infinity.
It seemed to cry to her, without thought or word, the message of its dark eternity and the awful meaning of its silences. Out of some sullen, monstrous, vast, arisen. Out of an abysmal deep of grief and fear, imagined by some blind, regardless self, a consciousness of being without its joy, empty of thought, incapable of bliss, that felt life blank and nowhere found a soul, a voice to the dumb anguish of the heart conveyed a stark sense of unspoken words. In her own depths, she heard the unuttered thought that made unreal the world and all life meant. Who art thou that claimest thy crown of separate birth? The illusion of thy soul's reality and personal Godhead on an ignorant globe in the animal body of imperfect man. Hope not to be happy in a world of pain. And dream not, listening to the unspoken word and dazzled by the inexpressible ray, transcending the mute superconscious realm to give a body to the unknowable. Or for a sanction to thy heart's delight, to burden with bliss the silent, still, supreme. Profaning its bare and formless sanctity. Or call into thy chamber the divine and sit with God tasting a human joy. I have created all. All I devour. I am death, and the dark, terrible mother of life. I am Kali, black and naked in the world. I am Maya, and the universe is my cheat. I lay waste human happiness with my breath and slay the will to live, the joy to be, that all may pass back into nothingness and only abide the eternal and absolute For only the blank eternal can be true. All else is shadow 
and flash in mind's bright glass. Mind, hollow mirror of its own in which ignorance sees. A hollow mirror in which ignorance sees a splendid figure of its own false self and dreams it sees a glorious solid world. O soul, inventor of man's thoughts and hopes, thyself the invention of the moment's stream. Illusion center or subtle apex point, at last know thyself. From vain existence cease. A shadow of the negating absolute. The intolerant darkness traveled surging past and ebbed in her the formidable voice. It left behind her inner world laid waste. A barren silence weighed upon her heart. Her kingdom of delight was there no more. Only her soul remained, its emptied stage, awaiting the unknown eternal will. Then from the heights, a greater voice came down. The word that touches the heart and finds the soul, the voice of light after the voice of night. The cry of the abyss drew heaven's reply. A might of storm <coughs> chased by the might of the sun. O soul, bear not thy kingdom to the foe. Consent to hide thy royalty of bliss, lest time and fate find out its avenues and beat with thunderous knock upon thy gates. Hide while thou canst thy treasure of separate self behind the luminous rampart of thy depths, till of a vaster empire it grows part. 
but not for self alone, the self is one. Content abide not with one conquered realm. Adventure all to make the whole world thine. Fear not to be nothing that thou mayest be all. Ascent to the emptiness of the Supreme, that all in thee may reach its absolute. Ascent to the emptiness of the Supreme that all in thee may reach its absolute. Accept to be small and human on the earth, interrupting thy newborn divinity that man may find his utter self in God. If for thy own sake only thou hast come, an immortal spirit into the mortal's world, to found thy luminous kingdom in God's dark, in the inconscience realm, one shining star, one door in the ignorance opened upon light. Why hadst thou any need to come at all? Thou hast come down into a struggling world to aid a blind and suffering mortal race to open to light the eyes that could not see, to bring down bliss into the heart of grief, to make thy life a bridge twixt earth and heaven. If thou would save the toiling universe, the vast universal suffering feel as thine. Thou must bear the sorrow that thou claimest to heal. The daybringer must walk in darkest night. He who would save the world must share its pain. If he knows not grief, how shall he find grief's cure? If far he walks above mortality's head, how shall the mortal reach that too high path? If one of theirs they see scale heaven's peak, Men then can hope to learn that titan climb. God must be born on earth and be as man, that man, being human, may grow even as God. He who would save the world must be one with the world. All suffering things contain in his heart's space. And bear the grief and joy of all that lives. His soul must be wider than the universe 
and feel eternity as its very self. His soul must be wider than the universe and feel eternity as its very stuff. Rejecting the moment's personality. Know itself older than the birth of time. Creation an incident in its consciousness. Arcturus and Belphegor, grains of fire circling in a corner of its boundless self. The world's destruction, a small transient storm in the calm infinity it has become. If thou wouldst a little loosen the vast chain, Draw back from the world that the idea has made. Thy mind selection from the infinite. Thy senses gloss on the infinitesimals dance. Then shalt thou know how the great bondage came. This is one of those mantric passages that can be remembered. If thou wouldst a little loosen the vast chain, draw back from the world that the idea has made, thy mind selection from the infinite, thy senses gloss on the infinitesimals dance, then shalt thou know how the great bondage came. Banish all thought from thee, and be God's void. Then shalt thou uncover the unknowable, and the superconscient conscious grow on thy tops. Infinity's vision through thy gaze shall pierce. Thou shalt look into the eyes of the unknown. Find the hid truth in things seen, null and false. Find the hid truth in things seen, null and false. Behind things known, discover mysteries rear. Thou shalt be one with God's bare reality. and the miraculous world he has become, and the diviner miracle still to be. When nature, who is now unconscious God, translucent grows to the eternal's light, her seeing his sight, her walk his steps of power, and life is filled with a spiritual joy, and matter is the Spirit's willing bride. Consent to be nothing and none. Dissolve time's work. Cast off thy mind. Step back from form and name. Annul thyself that only God may be. 